Hi, this is Joe Hildreth and welcome to My Heat. So uh, tonight we're going to carry on uh, with Bertha here. We're going to uh, tackle the uh, banjo and the change gears on the setup end. But before we start that, I, uh, you know, my kids always tell me, Dad, Dad, you got to stop with the dad jokes, right? But you know what? I got one I think I want to share with you. And yeah, it, you, you let me know what you think, right? I think it's pretty good. So there's this um, this park up in the northeast, you know, and it's been there for, I don't know, 130, 140 years. Beautiful old park, right? And about uh, 100 years ago, 110 years ago, they built these two statues, or, you know, these two bronze statues um, that they set in there. But, you know, this park, it has these beautiful little winding um, cobblestone pathways and a little brook that, you know... Um, flows through there and at the end of the pathway there's this big dice with a fountain and then just on the other side of the fountain the pathway continues and ends in this uh, big arch uh, with these climbing roses. Very very beautiful picturesque park and just on the other side of that arch are these two statues, right? Big bronze statues, been there for more than a hundred years, right? More than a century. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. And it's a man and it's a woman and they're up on their uh, plinth and they have their arms stretched out to each other um, like they're reaching toward each other, right? A very beautiful, picturesque scene. So anyway, <clears throat> one day an angel, he comes down, and he snaps his fingers, brings the statues to life, says, hey, says you two have been standing there for over a hundred years, reached out longing for each other. God thought he'd give you about, you know, a half hour of life to do anything that you want with. So, you know, he looks at her and <laughs> she looks at him and he says, shall we? And she says, yeah. So they jump off their plinth and around the bushes they go and they're back there and the bushes are all doing this here and you hear them giggling and laughing and about 15 minutes later they come staggering out all weak kneed, breathless, disheveled. So the uh, angel, he looks at his watch and he says, you know, you got about 15 more minutes if uh, you want to do that again. So she looks at him and he looks at her and he says, shall we? She says, yes. Yes, but this time let's trade positions. I'll hold the pigeon down. You crap on his head. <laughs> All right. So anyway, let me know what you think. So anyway, we're gonna. I'm gonna reposition the camera here, and we're gonna start back in here on uh, Bertha here on the banjo and the change gears, uh, where I want to throw out another uh, a huge thank you uh, to Jeremy Gagnon uh, for the uh, for the gift of the gears and the uh, and the bushing. So. I'll, uh, let me re reset the camera back up and catch here in just a second. When we last left off, um, we had installed the uh, lead screw direction change gearbox and we uh, put the stuff there on the end where the uh, banjo would go. So before we start with uh, installing the banjo, I want to show you a couple documents and hopefully you can see this. Um, okay, so the banjo looks like this and they're four positions. Or position A, B, C, and D. Okay, And uh, so those positions are used when you set up gears. Okay, Now the feed that we're going to set up is um, three and a half thousandths feed. And I don't know if it'll show up here, but see I have that highlighted right here. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to use these gears and and uh, remember, there's a, you have the screw gear, right, which in our case is a 64 um, tooth gear. And then I believe this is position B. We have a 64 on the um, back, a 20 on the front. And then in position A, we have a 20 in the back and a 56 on the front. So, and then the 56 then engages with the 16th tooth. Uh, on the on the stud, so so let's uh, let's get started. Okay, so with my uh, threading chart here uh, handy, uh, let's uh, start with the the banjo. And you recall that the banjo has uh, four positions. And you have A, B, C, and D. Okay, so uh, in order to get that on there, we're going to have to remove this nut. And washer and of course the spacer right here and the key and this heavy washer okay I'm gonna set these right over here for just a second 
Hopefully I don't lose anything. All right, and then on the um, on the uh, banjo, then this threads right into here, and this is what uh, you can actually come back here with a wrench and lock this down. Okay. So anyway, let's get this on here, and then I'm just going to thread that back there. I can actually loosen that up, I guess. Okay, so that's all the way up against there, and then we can put this back together. This heavy washer goes up against there. And then the Woodruff key is in here. And we have our spacer. Okay, and we're going to hold off on these two parts. So, um, in my experimentation and plan, um, it's, I think you always want to start with the lead screw and work your way out. Okay. So if we look at our chart, we see that the lead screw requires a 64 tooth gear. Okay. And it goes on the front. Okay. So recall that there's a spacer here. Um, you know, you could put the gear in the back or you can put the gear in the front. So we need a 64 tooth gear, okay, and let's go in the front. I'll slide that on here if I can get it lined up. Let's try this way. Let me get my big head out of the way. No. I'm not sure what's going on here. Probably not lining up the key. Oh, there it went. Okay, so that goes on there. And then our washer. Now these washers uh, uh, have a bevel on it. The bevel will go out toward the nut. Okay. And that will go on there. And then if we look next at our threading chart for three uh, for three and a half thousandths feed we have to put in position B in the back a 64 and in the front a 20 so remember this is A this is B okay so we have to have a bushing so slide the bolt back through here okay and then the bushing and then what did I say it was? It was a 64 in the back and a 20 in the front. So we'll grab the 64. No, that's a 56. Uh, oh, here it is. Here's the uh, 64 tooth gear. So that's going to go in the back. So put that one on there. And then a 20 tooth gear in the front. There, and then, of course, it goes on with a heavy washer and a nut. And then, finally, in position A, we have a 20 tooth gear that's in the back and a 56 tooth gear in the front. Okay, so we need our other bushing here. Okay, and then uh, so what was it? It was a uh, twenty tooth gear in the back. Okay. get it on there okay and then the 56 tooth gear in the front all right and then washer and a nut now if you follow Chris Anderson Chris Anderson went to set this uh, uh, this gear ratio up on his lathe and I think he was missing a gear had one that's too thick or or 
not, not thick enough or something. But anyway, if it weren't uh, for Jeremy Gagnon, uh, I wouldn't have the gears to do this. So Jeremy, thank you so very much for, for providing the 56 and the 20 tooth gear that I was missing in order to get this feed. Um, I understand it's a nice kind of general all round feed uh, to use. All right, so to set the gap on these, um, you need a little bit of play in, in these uh, gears. And I think the easiest way to do that is take a, I've taken a, a piece of uh, typing paper and cut a strip off and folded it in half. So I'm just gonna take this here, and I'm just gonna crush that between those two gears and tighten that nut up. Okay, I can roll that out. So if you see, I put some, I guess maybe hopefully you can see that, put some backlash in those gears. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing for the next one. We're just going to slide this up here where the uh, 20 gear in the back is going to mesh with the 56, I'm, I'm sorry, the 64 tooth gear. We're just going to bring that back here and we're going to again crush the uh, paper between the gear. You can roll that out and again, you see there's some backlash. And then finally, this, this gear here engages with the 16 tooth gear at the top. Again, same process. We're going to crush that between there and we're going to screw these in, or screw this uh, bolt in. Now this bolt uh, locks it to the uh, locks it to the uh, <laughs> to the uh, headstock end here so that it can't move. So but I think I'm going to have to probably maybe clean those threads out. But anyway, um, I'm going to leave that here. And uh, so, you know, these, these would be ready. They need to be, they need to be lubed up. Um, but uh, again, like I said, I just want to thank Jeremy for, for the gears. Um, this end is, is pretty much complete. I need to, uh, I'm, I'm going to probably come back in here and chase these threads because they seem a little stiff to me. Um, but I'll do that off camera and this end to be ready to go and uh, the the next part that uh, we're going to tackle is the apron okay and uh, I have some worn out parts in the uh, apron um, as a matter of fact uh, let me reposition the camera and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about so I'll be right back okay so I don't know how well this is going to show up but uh, here we have the bevel gear that's driven by the lead screw. And in this bevel gear, there's a key that's molded in there. And this key is very thin, kind of razor sharp. I, I imagine it wouldn't last too much longer. And if you can see it, you see that the bevel gear here, these are uh, worn down to sharp points. Okay. But um, I have managed to find these parts on eBay. And maybe we can see them here. This is the replacement um, lead screw uh, uh, bevel gear. And you see it has a nice full key there. And then the replacement bevel gear, um, this one here has quite a bit, quite a bit more meat on the teeth. So, but we're going to get into more of that uh, later. In the next video, we're going to disassemble the apron, uh, clean it up, and uh, see uh, you know what all's wrong with it if, if there's anything other than uh, than those gears I'm sure that the uh, half nuts are pretty worn and I'm sure that the bores are pretty worn too but um, yeah, I really have limited capacity to uh, to do repairs on these um, so anyway we'll come back with that uh, in the next video and again um, sorry about my bad jokes I couldn't help it uh, other than that uh, thank you so much for watching thanks for the comments and uh, emails that you send me and uh, other than that have a blessed day.